Has alien life just been discovered? This Cambridge scientist seems to think so. LBC has gotten in touch with Professor Nico Mahutaran, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who believes he's discovered alien life on an exoplanet 120 light years away. He speaks to Tom Swabrick and puts the chance of alien life on that planet being 50-50. Let's check it out. This is the story of the week for me, this. It'll be for me too. Imagine being Professor Niku. Professor Niku is an astrophysicist at Cambridge University. Picture okay. the scene. Professor Niku is quietly studying the data gathered on yet another exoplanet, <laughs> discovered some unfathomably far distant- I'm sorry, I just love how Tom's like, picture the scene, like he's telling us the story and I'm actually diving into it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> from Earth. And as Professor Niku stares at the data of yet another exoplanet in yet another solar system, mm. they notice something. This is where the suspenseful music would come in during the Netflix episode of this discovery. <laughs> the professor stares harder at the data. It can't be, he says. Oh. Is it? Not the, not the dramatic voice too. Okay, this guy's great. <laughs> I've never seen this channel, this is fantastic. The James Webb Space Telescope is set to turn its gaze towards a distant planet, K218b in another solar system, to investigate one of the most tantalizing hints of alien life ever discovered. This, folks, could be it. And our protagonist, the scientist who may have discovered life out there in the universe, is Professor Niku Madus Madusudan, Professor of Madusudan. Astrophysics and Exoplanetary okay. Science at the University of Cambridge, who joins me live. Thank you very Ooh, much indeed yes. for coming on the programme. Um, Right, we've, we, I think we've got, the de we've got the deeds to your life story sewn up here. We, we now own the rights <laughs> to this. Um, I love that uh, he, he did a live interview and this is not some like pre-recorded edited post. We get to see kind of like the raw conversation. I love that. I love that. Tell us where and when you found this. So last year, uh, we had uh, some JWST observations with the James Webb Space Telescope of this planet, uh, its atmosphere, and we detected for the first time ever carbon-bearing molecules like methane and CO2 uh, in its atmosphere and Ooh. did not detect other molecules like ammonia, which said that it should it's likely to have an ocean uh, underneath the atmosphere. But we also saw a oh. tentative sign of this molecule dimethyl sulfide, which we weren't sure, but still, even the very possibility of it being there it is, is enormous. Yeah. So this is this is dimethyl sulfide. Yeah, that's that's the important gas. And why is that gas yeah. so important? It's important because uh, on Earth, it is produced only from life. By living uh, creatures, only, yeah. Uh, mainly from microorganisms in the Earth's oceans. And it has been uh, known to be a robust biomarker if detected in planetary environments. Oh, and yes. it had been predicted uh, to be so. And we had been looking for it. And, and that's why it's super important. Oh yeah, I've heard of this. I love that. I um I heard that we found a planet that had gases that only life tends to produce, which is absolutely fascinating. And it really it's it's a breakthrough because this could be what we've been looking for. How much of it is there? Can you tell? I don't can they tell that? So we are not hundred percent sure yet. It could be anywhere of the order of a part per million. Um so Is that a lot? But, but if, it's a lot for that particular gas. On right. on Earth, it would be like significantly lower than that. Oh, oh and really? we're so a lot. There's a lot of us here. We actually have lower amounts of dimethyl sulfide on Earth than could be present on this particular planet. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. Which wow. is wild because it, could, um, if it comes from life, and we have lower amounts, and we're teeming with life. Imagine what's going on on that planet. What I love is your description, as I've read it, Professor, in one of the newspapers today of when you found that the, this gas might be present there. So talk, talk us through that. No, it's, it's a profound activity, this uh, search for biomarkers elsewhere, because the ramifications to society are enormous. So even if we detect the molecule, uh, we have to be really, really sure that it's there, and we have to be really sure it's from life uh, on another planet. There are many false positives that can happen. Uh, but the prospect of that being there has enormous ramifications because the search for life elsewhere has been one of the uh, longest standing uh, quest of of our species, of humankind. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this is when it's going to come true finally, that's a momentous occasion and we yes. don't take it lightly. I love that. And I love that they're taking the time to actually research it. I feel that there's a lot of... Uh, 
we get lost in the sauce of what the government's doing and what we know, what we don't know. But we do tend to forget that there are actual scientists that are lo looking to discover life outside of the Earth uh, by signals from other planets. And they're not just running to be like, yeah, there's life. Yeah, like they find things and they're like doing a thorough investigation because they don't want to excite us for no reason. I, I love this presentation and I, I love that the professor is seems to be taking it seriously because it is this is this would be a incredible breakthrough for us. Could you imagine? Oh my god. So w I, I read that you couldn't sleep for a week. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> that is correct. I would be so, so excited. Could you week. imagine? You know, it, it hits you hard when, when <laughs> uh, you see the possibility of such a big uh, discovery, big discovery. It, it, for, a, for a scientist. Um, it's it's quite enormous. Yeah, this planet is quite big as well, isn't it? Is, is it two and a half times the size of Earth, something like that? That's correct. Yes. Oh yeah. wow! And you think that because this gas exists, the presence of water is there, oceans are there, and therefore the life that would be giving off this gas will be residing somewhere on some um, faraway planet's ocean floor. Yeah, the evidence for the oceans comes from other gases that we have actually detected robustly, the methane and carbon dioxide, and we did not detect ammonia. That combination tells us that it's very, yes. it very likely has an ocean. We need more observations to confirm that, but, but the ocean narrative is very much possible. And then if we detect this gas, it, you put all of these together, uh, together says that you know, there, are, there could be microorganisms on an ocean world elsewhere. Dumb. But consider, but consider not just the microorganisms. If they have more of that gas than we have, and it's only produced by life, and the planet is two times, at least two times bigger than ours, imagine how much life could fit on there. I mean, think of how much life there is here on Earth. Imagine if we were two point five times bigger than we are now. We would. It, it's that's wow. Wow, that's blowing my mind. I'm blown away. This is incredible. Professor, so you make this discovery, you see this in the data, you think, oh my God. You're right. Who do you ring? Who do you tell? <laughs> how do you, how do you, so what, what chain is there to make, get this to the top of the chain to say, guys, I think I've discovered life? Well, it took me about a week to muster the courage to even think that that's anywhere close to real and break it to my own group, my own students <laughs> working with me. So, so you don't drink anyone, you're just shell-shocked for a while. And then I can, slowly I respect that. all come together and work on it for many more months uh, before, uh, weeks and months before we robustly establish it and then you, you publish it and so on. And to the extent that the James Webb Telescope is what, as we speak, looking at this particular exoplanet K218b to see what images it can get of it. Yeah, it just happened this morning, actually. So so it has already oh. done it uh, early this morning. Uh, so we have the observations. They're beaming um, uh, information in right back. now. That's uh, so, so cool. That's so cool. Technology is so cool. And the analysis will start anytime now. Wow. Ah. So you could, yes. how long is it? Yes, Tom, wow. <laughs> I'm blown away. I love this. I think that's so cool. I love how our technology works. We're like beaming information from light years away onto the earth to do more investigation, to do more research, to find out what the hell's going on. That would be such a breakthrough. That would be so cool. I mean, we already talk about extraterrestrials and UFOs and like what if advanced beings are coming in and visiting and or giving technology whatever the case may be but it's like what if we also find an exoplanet with life that is on our level or at least coming up to our level like still evolving we catch it in the early stages imagine that level of communication imagine being able to see a life developing on a planet in early stages and learning more about how we developed here this is brilliant this is so cool i love i'm Lord, I love this. To fully analyze this. So, so we will obviously take our time to do very careful analysis. So it's going to be months before uh, we can say anything uh, for sure. What do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. That's, wow. Wow, that high? That's, high, yeah. I, I, yeah, and that's purely going by what the data has been telling us in the past and what uh, what we know from theory, uh, it, it could be 50-50. It is very high, I know, uh, but but that's that's what the is, data says. Again, dumb question, incredible. but I think, you know, context matters here. Is that 
Have there been other situations, other discoveries where they've said, right, we think this is 50-50, we think this is about as close as we've ever been to discovering it? Not on an exoplanet, never. Oh, Not a planet yes. outside the solar system. That's incredible. That's wow. I think, That's Professor, you, wild. you are a couple of months away from being perhaps the most famous person in the world. <laughs> well, um, I mean... I would like to find what the truth is, and I will leave it there. Um, and, respect. And that, that's my respect. number one duty here, um, and, and we'll see how it turns out. Oh, Professor well, Nick, listen, I'd love that. As and that. when you've got the information in, as and when you think you're, you're ready to go, could one of the calls please be to us, <laughs> just so we can have first dibs <laughs> on telling the world that, we've, that you've we discovered, discovered life. life out there? No, so Tom, I, I'm fighting I, you for I that call. That it won't come so easy in the sense <laughs> that we won't get a detection of life with one other observation. It'll probably take us closer to truth, and then that'll set off uh, in motion a number of other studies, theoretical and observational. And, you know, like, like all uh, good science, uh, it'll be gradual. It'll not be like an immediate uh, Right, immediate because result. good science takes time and it takes research. And people tend to forget that, especially in 2024. I love this. I love this, Professor. Yes. But every step that takes us closer to truth is a huge step forward. And that's what I'm looking forward to. So maybe not this observation, uh, an ironclad result, but maybe in a few, maybe, I don't know, maybe in a month, in a few months, maybe in a year. Oh, it could come that's anytime. so cool. Well, you're not going to get much sleep, I think. It, it, I hope it comes sooner rather than later because you're going to need to get some kip. Because um, having to <laughs> be, being having those sleepless nights for a year is going to be a problem. Yeah, so we are used to these operations uh, at the, the cutting edge. So I think we'll survive. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic to talk to you. Congratulations <laughs> to you and your team. Absolutely fascinating. Professor Nick. I love his Matthew energy. Sudi, professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge, who is leading this study into this planet, K218b. It is a an exoplanet in orbit around a red dwarf star called K218. If you wanted it to be belt and braces, I mean, that is... Come on. Imagine right. that. Put the radio right. on one afternoon. You're listening to this bloke wittering on. And the, the show stops and you go, just going to break the news to you. Do you remember that guy that we spoke to a couple of months back? The, the, the Cambridge side. He's done it. He's, He's found, found life. life. Out, we found <laughs> life. Our proper life. Not the little tiddly billy bits. but you know, Like proper, life life. Proper life. Tiddly, what, in the what does that even wow. mean, Tom? Incredible. <laughs> Wow. Well, I personally think that is incredible. That is an incredible discovery. And I am happy to say that I am I love this professor. I think that this is a great person to be researching this and in charge. He seems to have a great head. I mean, obviously, he's a professor. He's smart. But he has a great head on his shoulders. Uh, he seems to not want to jump the gun, but he's being very real and very practical. And I am excited for more research to come out from this. I am excited to see what the James Webb Telescope can tell us and what this professor has to say going forward. I can't wait for them to start their research. And I can't wait. I, I, I'm I'm blown away. This is so cool. And again, just the fact that that planet is so much bigger than ours. If we do find life on there, imagine how much life there could be on there. Imagine seeing evolution's first steps, confirming what we've been thinking about ourselves for so long. This could be a major, major breakthrough. Again, even if there are extraterrestrials that are more advanced already coming here, it would be an incredible breakthrough to see, to catch life at the beginning. I love this. I'm so glad. Y'all, the full interview is going to be linked in the description below, as is the channel LBC. Go subscribe to them. Go check them out. Go check out the interview. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Smash that like if you like this. Smash this like if you didn't. <laughs> Smash subscribe if you haven't already, and join the Discord, y'all. I will see you guys next time. Keep looking up. There's something up there.